So whenever anyone argues like I do that this energy balance, calories in, calories out thing is meaningless, we're accused of not understanding the laws of thermodynamics. I was actually on the Larry King show when Good Calories, Bad Calories came out, and Jillian Michaels, a trainer from The Biggest Loser, came on from Los Angeles and gave me a lecture on thermodynamics on national television. And after we went to a commercial break, I turned to Mehmet Oz, who was sitting next to me, and I said, I have a physics degree from Harvard. <laughs> and I just, Jillian Michaels just lectured me on thermodynamics. And you can watch this cut on TV. I'm, like, literally speechless. I, so... Um, it's on YouTube. Uh, okay, we believe this stuff about calories because of the first law of thermodynamics, which is the law of energy conservation. Simply put, energy is not created nor destroyed. It's the one law of thermodynamics that's easy to understand. Okay, so the idea is if a system gets more massive, it takes in more energy than it expends. If the system gets less massive, it doesn't matter what the system is, it's got to expend more than it takes in because we can't create energy from nowhere and we can't um, uh, make energy vanish. It can only change forms. Okay, it's a very simple law. It gets translated into this energy balance equation. Delta E, the change of energy in a system, is equal to the energy that goes in minus the energy that goes out. Okay, and in terms of our obesity issue, delta E becomes our fat stores, our energy stores. And so change in fat mass equal to energy consumed minus energy expended. And what we do with this law, we say, look, if E in goes up, if I eat more, <coughs> and E out doesn't change, I don't compensate by exercising more, then delta E becomes positive and I start storing energy. Therefore, eating too much causes obesity. And if E out goes down, if I become sedentary, I have an accident or something, I break my leg and I don't compensate by eating less, Delta E becomes positive. I start storing energy. Therefore, sedentary behavior causes obesity. So it makes perfect sense. It's completely logical. The problem is there is no arrow of causality in this law. By that I mean all the laws of thermodynamics say are if a system gets bigger, this is what happens. And if it gets less massive, this is what happens. But it says nothing about why the system gets more or less massive. For instance, a star could get more massive, but we know that it's not eating more. You know, it just says this is what, it's, so it's, it's an association. And this is the way the universe works. It's a law. It's always true. But it tells us nothing about causality. So one way to think about it, a metaphor, is imagine we're walking by the hallway here. And we look in and we see that this room is packed with energy. So you want to ask me, why is this room so crowded with energy? Same way we want to know why that person's fat tissue is so full of energy. Okay? So it's an equivalent thing. And so you say to me, Gary, why is that room so full of energy? And I say, because more people entered than left. Which is the equivalent of saying more energy entered than left. Which is the equivalent of saying that person got fat because they more energy entered than left. Have I told you anything you didn't know? Okay? I haven't told you. It's obvious more people entered than left because the room is crowded. That's a given. So you say to me, Gary, that's a given. I want a real answer, not this bogus more people entered than left thing. So I say, ah, okay, but if more people enter than leave, it's got to get more crowded, right? Which is equivalent of saying if you eat more than you expend, you have to get fatter. Have I told you anything yet? Are you still satisfied with my answer? And I hope by this time you're ready to slap me. Okay, so what could be an explanation? Why could this room be so full of energy? Maybe there's a lecture going on. Maybe there's a compelling speaker. Maybe there's free drinks in here. Maybe you notice that Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt had stumbled in and were sitting in the front row. Okay, maybe the air conditioning worked in here, but nowhere else in the building. It was 95 degrees out there and 72 in here. Maybe the fire alarms went off outside. And the sprinkler system was on. This was the only room that wasn't wet. Maybe there are large members of the University of Colorado football team standing at the door, throwing people in and not letting them leave. These are all explanations for why this room is full of energy in the form of people. Okay? They, they talk about the conditions inside the room, the speaker, the free drinks, Angelina and Brad, the temperature. The difference between the conditions inside and outside, the temperature differential, right? The, the, water outside from the sprinklers, it's dry in here, and even the conditions at the boundary, the, the big football players throwing people in and not letting them out. These are all meaningful explanations. That more energy in the form of people came in than left is meaningless. It's a given. And in fact, it doesn't even tell you whether the room's crowded. It only tells you that it's getting more crowded if that's happening. 
And so the point is, when you say the same thing about obesity, the people got fat because they took in more energy than they expend, you are saying nothing. If they got fatter, they took in more energy than they expended. That is a given. This is the single biggest mistake that was made in obesity research. It was embraced. It was always there. It was embraced in the 1950s. And it became the conventional wisdom. And nobody questioned it. I didn't question it. It seems obvious. The laws of thermodynamics say nothing about obesity. They're completely irrelevant. They're always true, Jillian. But they say nothing. <laughs> about why we get fat. And when I was lecturing recently to a group of cardiologists at the Mayo Clinic, I said, look, why is it that from the moment you enter medical school to the moment you retire, the only disorder you will ever diagnose with a physics textbook is obesity. This is biology, folks. It's endocrinology. It's physiology. Physics has nothing to do with it. The laws of thermodynamics are always true. The energy balance equation is irrelevant. If somebody's getting fatter, I guarantee you they're taking more energy than they expend. Okay, as long as they're getting heavier. And if they're getting leaner, I guarantee you they're expending more than they're taking in. Given. Let's never discuss it again. And if you say it to your patients, you're telling them nothing. You're telling them that lecture hall was crowded because more people entered than left.